This is Paul Thomas, Senior Editor with Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Magazine and PharmaManufacturing.com. I'm here at Interfex 2009 and I'm speaking today with Jane Lansing. Jane is the Vice President of Marketing with Emerson Process Systems. Jane, thanks for being with us today. Uh, thank you very much. I'm really happy to be here. Appreciate it. And of course, Emerson is a leader in automation parts and systems and uh, is very well known in that area. It's also a leader in the adoption of wireless technologies in the pharmaceutical industry, which we'll talk about a little bit. But I want to start out a little bit broad and just say, uh, just see what you think in terms of where we are in terms of automation right now, um, obviously the benefits are there in terms of compliance, in terms of risk management, cost control. What are you hearing from the pharmaceutical industry in terms of what's dominating their interest in automation right now? Um, you know, I don't think any large scale business can actually take one of those and have it dominate. I think there, there's always gonna be a balance between compliance and, and innovation and, and, and cost control. Um, you know, where I think the, the automation rub typically comes is that there's a fear that being innovative with automation is going to cost you your compliance. And, and so what a lot of, and what I see a lot of the leading pharmaceutical manufacturers doing is actually embracing automation as an opportunity to innovate in their process without it costing or impacting their compliance. Mm -hmm. And so there, there is a big opportunity to do that sort of within all of those constraints. It's sort of like kind of operating inside of that envelope. Mm -hmm. And a lot of your clients are obviously true innovators, but there are still those challenges even for people who want to innovate. What are some of those other challenges? You know, we see the biggest challenge, um, you know, out there in the industry today, and I think this probably goes beyond the pharmaceutical and life science industry, as the whole issue of knowledge retention, um, you know, best practices. And if you're, if you're going to innovate, you really want to do it with really knowledgeable people and implementing those best practices across your organization. And... Um, and so that requires the, the organizations really focusing on that, and I think also working together with suppliers. And we got a, a great example of that is we got a number of our um, our very good pharmaceutical customers are working together, not only with us for product direction and things that we can do to help them capture that knowledge and use it in their um, in their processes, but also with each other. So when there's common unit operations and things like that, so I mean, it's a really uh, I think a big step for the industry, and it's really helpful for us to work together with customers that way. So downsizing or a lot of the shifting that's going on in the industry doesn't necessarily mean that they can't try some of these uh, new project no, new projects. No, absolutely, and we see a lot of innovation because you know we're known as an innovator in the industry, and we're we're introducing a lot of innovation, and um, we see a you know the pharmaceutical industry embracing that. Mm -hmm. And of course, wireless is one area where innovation is taking place. Give us your take on where pharma is in terms of wireless right now. Um, you know, I think that you got to sort of stand back and look at the whole big picture of wireless. And there's really holistically, there's the the, the plant network, this large uh, Wi-Fi infrastructure. And, and actually, amongst all of the industries we serve, the pharmaceutical industry is a leader. And I think it's because they're very enterprise savvy and extending that whole sort of electronic batch reporting and tracking into a mobile environment was a pretty easy thing to do. So just sort of unleashing operators from the control room and taking their handhelds out mm -hmm. there. Um, so I'm very, very definitely a leader in that space. On the other side, on the field side, the process connected wireless instrumentation is relatively new and the industry is just starting to embrace that right now. Mm -hmm. Um, talk a little bit more about that then. What are what are some of the challenges in embracing that wireless technology, especially in process situations? You know, um, I think the big concern obviously is retaining validation and compliance like we talked about earlier. Um, you know, people typically think of, you know, change in doing something to your process is going to impact your, uh, your, your compliance. And so what, what customers are basically doing is looking for those first applications that are, first of all, in uh, non-CGMP areas. So mm -hmm. looking where they can, and, and actually solve those solve real business problems. So how can I take and use this technology where I have a real live business problem and it's anything from monitoring safety showers to um, looking at temperatures in cold storage rooms or things like that. Um, any place they had an operator going around doing mobile, anything tracking and looking at, um, you know, gauges, chart recorders, anything mm -hmm. manual, uh, vibration monitoring, those are all round. All of those things are, are being replaced. And so customers are using that 
and it gives them an opportunity to say, hey, it actually works in my environment, you know, mm -hmm. all the stainless steel and things like that. And then mm -hmm. from there, basically going and saying, now that I know that it works inside the pharmaceutical environment, I'm going to actually test it um, for the, the uh, you know, the CGMP uh, validated processes. So start on maybe a pilot plant and... Um, then you can actually test it with your work processes, your workflow, skids moving in and out, uh, flexible manufacturing, disposable manufacturing, all those various things, and um, and then scale it up with your pilot plant or pilot operations. So, and Emerson also has test procedures to help customers do that. It's a new thing for our industry, so mm -hmm. we've developed those test procedures. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the validation concerns have eased somewhat as FDA has gotten more familiar with some of these technologies as well. But I, I get the feeling that there are still some obstacles out there. Um, what about standards? I mean, where are we right now with wireless standards? You know, that's a, that's a great question. And um, the it wasn't until the wireless heart standard was uh, finalized in September of 2007. And we actually had product long before then. And it wasn't until there was that wireless heart standard that the life sciences and pharmaceutical industry started to say, okay, we're going to embrace this technology. We're going to put it in our plant. You know, we've, we've got a standard. It's, uh, it's actually now uh, an IEC publicly available specification, so it's moving towards that global IEC um, standardization. And it's now additionally um, being supported by all the major players. So ABB, Anderson Hauser, Siemens, Emerson, I mean, all the big instrumentation players are putting mm -hmm. R&D money and product behind it. So I think we're ready to go. I think that's all shaken out. Mm -hmm. So you've you've pretty much eliminated all the arguments. You've got, you know, compliance issues are, are much better now than they used to be. Standards are better. The technology is definitely there. Um, so what is the sky the limit? I mean, what do you see as the balance of the future plant in terms of wireless applications and wired applications? You know, um, it's for pharmaceutical, I would really tilt the balance, in fact, towards completely wireless. And that is because, and that's now I'm, I'm talking 10 to 20 years from now, so mm -hmm. I'm not talking tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the opportunity, if you go outside of life sciences and pharmaceutical, you know, the opportunity for wireless is, um, you know, it's more process insight. I mean, that's what customers are looking for is how do I get more process insight, more process knowledge, information? How do I get that predictive information about what's going on um, so I can basically manage that plant and that process better and do a better mm -hmm. job of that? And, um, you know, but with, in, in, in the, you know, hydrocarbon in those industries, you get that big yeah, cost reduction so you don't have the, the deployment cost. Um, but in pharmaceutical, it's sort of that, that deployment cost is sort of the gift that keeps on giving because you are, have this flexible environment. So you are able to continually make your operations more agile because you don't have those wires around. So I believe that once the pharmaceutical industry does their testing, does their validation, they are going to go very quickly to a, uh, a, a full wireless environment for, for basically bulk manufacturing. Mm, no kidding. So not just for process monitoring, but also for process control? Absolutely for process control. I mean, the technology is designed for and it is capable of and is doing process control today. So mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, I hope you're right. We'll check back with you in 20 years and see if you're right. <laughs> or so, 10, 10. Okay. Sounds good. Jane Lansing, thanks so much for being with us today. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm.